Hey guys, Trev here from SpineWise. Um, today I want to talk to you about neck pain, but I want to talk to you about it from a slightly different perspective. I want to talk to you about it from a biochemical perspective. Uh, because we all know that neck pain comes from injuries and uh, poor postures and sleep patterns and too much time on tech and all this kind of stuff. But today I want to talk to you about a possible link between neck pain and your vitamin D levels. So that's something very, very different to talk about. So a couple of key things we want to talk about before we get into that is um, uh, the actual role of vitamin D in the human body because we talk about it as a vitamin but it's actually not a vitamin. So vitamins uh, got their original name as vital amines. In other words, these are things you have to get from your diet in order for us to survive. Vitamin D we know is definitely not that nowadays. So it's actually not a vitamin, it's what we call a pro-hormone. And this is why you hear about things like vitamin B1, B2, B6, all these kind of things, but you never hear of things like B7 and B8, do you? And these are because these kind of vitamins have now been understood to actually be able to be generated from the human body and therefore aren't actually vital anymore. So hence they've lost their vitamin status. And vitamin D is one of those things that really should be losing that. So really we refer to it as colsferol which is um, uh, the actual proper name for vitamin D um, uh, as opposed to vitamin D itself. So some key points to understand about vitamin D before we get into it. Um, the first thing I need to understand is that, as I said, vitamin D is actually a hormone or pro-hormone, not actually a vitamin. You do not get vitamin D from the sun. That is a myth. It does not work that way. You cannot produce a biochemical substance from light. It just doesn't work like that at this point in what we understand in physics or technology. But the sun does um, play an important role with vitamin D. And the big thing that actually does is that in the skin we have cholesterol. And that cholesterol, when, the, when a very, very certain uh, spectrum of UV light hits it, it's not sun, it's a very, very specific part of UV light hits the skin, the net result of it is it stimulates the production of, um, stimulates the production of our um, vitamin D in the skin. So if those pathways are blocked, or you don't get that specific wavelength of light, then this can actually impair vitamin D production. In addition, once that's occurred, you then need to convert vitamin D that the skin has produced, which is known as D2, D3, these are things you get from your diet and from the sunlight, into what we call 25-hydroxyl vitamin D, which is a liver function. Um, and even then, even though that's what your labs test for, that's a storage form of vitamin D, that's still not the form you use. The form you use is a substance called 125 vitamin D, which again needs to be hydroxylated in the kidney to produce that form. So not only do we need proper light exposure, not only do we need those biochemical pathways working, but we also need healthy liver function and healthy kidney function in order to produce vitamin D. So there are key few things that we know that are associated with vitamin D when it comes to our health. Um, big things is, and we all know those associated with osteoporosis and the bone change, things like that, but I'm gonna talk about something a little bit different. The first one is we know low vitamin levels of D are associated with chronic pain, and there's a ton of studies now showing that if you have very low vitamin D, you're at high risk for chronic pain type syndromes. There's also some studies showing that if you are having a chronic pain problem, taking vitamin D may actually negate that and improve your, your um, pain levels. The next one is neck pain. Um, there was a recent study done uh, a few years ago now where they looked at neck pain, uh, especially in women, and they found that if you had a lower level of vitamin D, and even if your ferritin levels were off, then this was more likely to generate neck pain um, as well. And we're going to talk about a little bit about that today. It's also critical in brain function. There are actually receptors in the brain for vitamin D, uh, and this is used to help regulate brain health and neurological health, and also your immune system. And we saw this with the virus that we had going through here in 2020, uh, and even now into 2021, is that vitamin D is a key factor in terms of driving our innate immune response. And this activates our initial immune response to help wipe that out. There's been some good studies now showing that um, a good level of vitamin D will, will do a, go a long way to reducing your chances of, of dying from the virus that's run around. Uh, next one, Levator scap. Um, this is another key muscle I want to talk to you about because we've kind of touched on it a little bit in, over the past and even this week we've touched on it a little bit. But one of the key things in applied kinesiology that's been associated or been linked to it is that um, what's been observed is that the levator scap muscle seems to become dysfunctional in people who have parathyroid hormone problems. And parathyroid hormones is really used for a couple of things. Number one, to liberate calcium back into the bloodstream, out of bone to help stabilize blood calcium levels. And the second one is used for as well and this is a, a not too well, um, um, uh, it's not very aware, a lot of people are aware of it, 
is parathyroid hormone is also used to activate our innate immune response, especially to viral infections. In other words, it's used to activate vitamin D in, rela in relation to viral infection. Um, so one of the things that we often see is people who have problems with levator scap often have vitamin D issues as well. And um, this is, a, again, not a research-based thing, it's just something that's been observed over the years clinically uh, in some of the offices. Uh, and when levator scap goes uh, horribly wrong, we end up with neck problems, uh, cervical disc issues sometimes are associated with it, uh, brain health problems due to the changes that we get in the upper cervical spine, which we'll talk about in a second, and also activation of our fight or flight responses, our sympathetic outflow. So what is our levator scap muscle? Levator scap muscle is this big muscle here, this ripple one here that we've spoken about on a few occasions. Uh, basically, it attaches from your shoulder blade and it goes up into the top areas of your neck. And these are really critical, but these top areas of your neck through here are very, very intricate in our neural pathways, um, especially in regards to flight or flight responses uh, and our brain stem and general brain health as well. So these are really critical if you're suffering from things like migraines, headaches, uh, insomnia, um, if you're having issues with light, sound sensitivity, jaw problems, these areas up here are really, really critical for your overall health, well-being, and prevention of those issues. So when the levator scap goes haywire, this area becomes a problem, and this often generates neck issues, both in the upper cervical spine and the lower cervical spine, as well as all those other things like headaches, migraines, things like that as well. So as I said before, this is something that's been associated in applied kinesiology for a few years now is dysfunction of the levator scap um, with parathyroid changes, and as we said before, the link between parathyroid changes and vitamin D. And this could be a possible link that this research was potentially getting to uh, in the sense that it may actually be not just a chronic pain pattern, but there may actually be some involvement in the levator scap. Whilst it wasn't named in the research, it might be a possible link that there's an issue with levator scap with people with vitamin D. I said there's no research on it, we're just kind of putting things together as to potentially how that might be a problem for you. So anyway guys, if you are having chronic pain issues and neck issues, um, get your vitamin D levels checked. Uh, it is such a simple thing to do. In Melbourne here, the only, uh, we pretty much get the, the wavelength of light we need right year round, with the exception of July and August. It's very hard for us to produce uh, vitamin D in July and August. Basically the sun needs to be above 45 degrees in the sky in order for us to produce vitamin D. So even if you're out and about in the morning and the evening, if you don't get exposure to the sun at that time of the day, you're still not going to get the stimulation to produce vitamin D that you need. Um, so given we're 37, 38 degrees, something like that south uh, here in Melbourne, um, we just don't get the sun high enough in the sky for those two months of the year to produce it. So you really need to make sure those months leading up to it, uh, May, June, uh, even April to some extent, you really need to make sure you're getting your vitamin D levels in uh, when you're not getting sunburnt as well to try and get this up and try and give you some sense of of stability as we head into those crazy months with no vitamin D production. Anyway guys, if you have any questions on this, you want to know more about vitamin D, you want to know more about how it affects neck migraines, chronic pain or anything like that, just send me a message, post down below if you've had issues with it in the past um, and how low your vitamin D counts were um, and I'll get some information to you. Anyway guys, remember it's all about adding quality of life to your years. We'll see you in the next vid. Bye for now.